Hello, everybody. It's that time for another Incarnate live stream. You know, we're going to be breaking stuff today. We're breaking stuff. All right, that's that's so much fun. Who doesn't like breaking stuff? Yay, stream time. Woo, are you ready? Stream time. Lily Rose, welcome, Your Majesty. Glad to have you here with us today. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Hey, we're breaking stuff. You know what that means? We get to take maps from the Explorer page and destroy them. Demolition time. Whether it's a 60-foot mega mutant goat with six eyes, demonic, and come from hell to destroy your village, or a tornado made of bloody corpses terrorizing through your house. Okay, so whatever it is, we're going to be showing you how to break stuff. Yeah, love it. Who doesn't like destroying stuff? You get to bring out those destructive forces, you know. Everyone's got them. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm excited. We get to break stuff. Yeah. Just some real quick announcements. Cheryl is going to be modding today. So if you have any questions, ask SL Mumby. Okay, please ask your questions. We will answer them. Woo, destruction is therapeutic. I totally agree. All right. The other announcement was I think that we've just concluded the con uh, the Babylonian contest. So looking forward to seeing uh, the winner for that. All, everyone's um, submissions were fantastic, by the way. So excited for that. Awesome. I don't have any other announcements other than that. Let's just go right into breaking stuff. Destructor mode. Awesome. You know, just so many. There's been so many great maps on the explore page lately. Just everyone's doing so great. Loving the maps. And that first one I wanted to do that I saw was called Crypt of the Spearhead by Mr. Corwin. Great map. Uh, it's perfect for breaking stuff. I see there's some some things in here that we can work with. So I think we're going to go ahead and first start with breaking this map. So we'll go, we'll clone, and we'll edit. If you want, you can follow along. Just go right to the Explore page, right over to Mr. Corwin. It's just the second map. View the map, and then go to Clone and Edit. Okay? Now, you have to make sure that you save, because if you don't save, that clone won't be there. So just, just remember that it, right after you clone a map, just be sure to save it right away so you don't lose it. Okay? All right, let's take a look. I really just like the composition of this. I like this, these walls here, beautiful. I like uh, overall the, the color. There's no filters here, but that's still really nice. And I think what we're gonna do is just like, just totally terrorize one of these walls. Just, just mangle it right up. Make it look like maybe something came, dug a tunnel and destroyed the wall and there's rubble everywhere. And uh, you know, the way that we go about breaking stuff is first deciding what it is uh, caused the destruction. Like I said, 60 foot mega goat, demonic mega goat spawn from hell that wants to, you know, just unleash its furry fury upon your house or whatever, or it's going to be uh, hail and brimstone, whether it's going to be uh, maybe an earthquake or maybe time over time, something has degraded and fallen apart. So, First, you want to think about what exactly caused this destruction, and it will be easier to relay then that kind of destruction, that kind of rubble and breaking on the map. So think about what forces caused this destruction, and that will help. Oh, sorry, I missed you, Dodo. I saw you there. Welcome. Awesome. Yeah. Got some fun peeps here. So again, just remember what forces are causing this destruction, and then it'll be easier for you to kind of convey that on the map. So like I said earlier, we kind of wanted to convey the idea that maybe something burrowed through the ground and just burst through this wall right here. And I'm going to go ahead and just delete these real quick and see what we have for the setup. It looks like they went ahead and used the maybe the FG layer, the add mode of the mask tool, and filled in. And that's okay, where you might want to consider then making some of uh, the rubble that came out that's going to be out like this. We might want to consider using the add mode on that. First, let's just go ahead and just move some things out of the way, and then we can kind of decide how to move from there. So we want to think about the direction and the force that... Uh, that whatever creature is burrowing out of the ground and into this thing, we want to think about in what direction would the wall collapse. The wall wouldn't collapse outward to where the tunnel is being burrowed. It would collapse inward, okay? It would collapse like this. Most of the rubble would be out kind of like this. 
because the person or creature or whatever that's burrowing through here is coming out this way, right? And so the rubble is going to be projecting away from the impact zone or impact area. That is wherever the creature was, like slammed against the wall, causing the bricks to fall apart, the mortar to kind of powderize, and then the bricks just fall down onto the ground and there's rubble, whether it's dust from the mortar, whether it's chips from the brick collapsing onto the ground and blowing up. So think about all those kind of things. So first, we've already set the impact zone, the direction in which the rubble is going to be projected. And now we just have to do, do that to show that. So let's go ahead and delete my little guide here that I have. Don't forget, if you have any questions, feel free to ask Cheryl, okay? She is our moderator. So let's first go ahead and show some wall that is that actually has been able to stay in contact, okay? It's this part right here that we want to show that has going to have or has collapsed. So let's just go ahead and see here. This looks like this has been baked in right here. Yep, I'm not seeing any. Yep, I'm not seeing any of that. So this, will, this has been... Sh baked in, we might have to go over that. So now that you've had these pieces right here, let me see, is it maybe outside of the, of it? Let me check, yeah, no, it's not, okay. So I'm gonna rotate these just a hair, like this, just to show that there has been tension on the wall, like there's tension on that wall. As this main impact zone is exploded out, so should these edges right here. Some of the bricks should be rotated just a little bit, okay? So go ahead and just take this right here, and you're not gonna use that shift key that gives you direct, uh, in some in increments in, uh, let's see, I think it's 10 degree increments. You don't wanna use that, or whatever degree increments it is, you don't wanna use that. You're gonna wanna freehand it, so don't press shift, Rotate up just a little bit because you don't want it to be so much that it's like this. You want just a little bit. These are parts of the wall that have been retained and are not, don't have quite as much damage. Then the next step is to continue to change that rotation the more that you go inward. It doesn't have to be like an equation or anything like that. Just rotate it and to make sure that you're showing the main part that has exploded out. So what we're going to do is open up this set particularly and just kind of make sure that we look at these pieces. And if there are any broken variations of this, we're going to want to use that. Otherwise, we're going to have to break that set to work to make it look like broken. So let's go with type in the tag broken at the top. And you're going to see all the different broken things right here. There's also a tag as well called broken, or you can just type it in the tags right here. And we're going to go through all the broken and kind of see what walls are busted. And I think right here, this is what we're looking at, crypt wall. And the crypt walls work really nice. They have these really, really nice um, kind of exploded looking pieces with the rubble all over the place. And what we're trying to do is we don't want to, oh, well, I see a problem here. This is slightly different from this color. One second. Did they do HSBC on this? One second. Let's just check. Nope, saturation's all the way up. Looks like the hue has changed. Okay, all right, that's not a problem. All we need to do then is just shift this all the way this way. There you go. Wanna make sure that it's the same, the same hue, okay? You want your walls to kind of match. Let me just check what other settings here. We've got saturation at 200%. Let's make sure that we do that. Ooh, kind of an interesting red. I kinda actually like that. Uh, that reddish color that's kind of a contrasting color against these kind of cooler colors. You have this nice warm color, so that looks really nice. All right, so these are the broken pieces. Let's just scroll through these various pieces to see what we have here. And I kind of like these pieces right here where the part of it has kind of broken off, and that works pretty good. Let me place it down first and just see uh, how the rubble is placed. And I kind of feel like I should flip this like this and put it up here. And I'm gonna also rotate it just a bit like this. And then I'm gonna go back into that set and kind of look for more rubble pieces. I think this one right here should do good. Let's just flip it again. Like this. Okay, I'm gonna flip like this. And this is kind of that impact area. So now the thing that we wanna do is, is that we also wanna show that there's also these bricks that are lying around on the ground. Obviously, whatever the force is, a creature is not strong enough to completely powderize an entire wall to where there's nothing left. If you show this gap in the wall without rubble, it's you're gonna make it's gonna look odd. So you wanna make sure that you add in little pieces of rubble, whether you want to do it through texture 
or whether you want to do it through little rocks. You know, you got to pepper in some some um, rubble. If you don't have that on there, it's going to look kind of weird. Like, well, okay, this thing broke off. Where Where's all the little pieces? Did the custodian come through and just sweep that all up and take it off on their custodian court? cart? You know, what, what happened there, right? So you have to add in a lot of a lot of debris to make it look like there has been an impact, an explosion. And then we're going to also ungroup these and kind of rotate them. If they have any that are broken, then we'll make sure to use those. That'd be great. If not, then we might just have them just look like they just got thrown. We'll look at options for that. So we'll look at that. Let's first figure out how we want to do the rubble and then also maybe a little bit of a hint of a tunnel. So I'm going to go in with the mask tool make sure it's set to add and i'm going to turn off smooth and the reason why i'm turning off smooth is because we want to create kind of a broken edges where our outline is where that brown line is so we want some broken like edges so it looks like some ruin and disaster has kind of happened so let's first check our size we might want to switch down to three the lowest size or the lowest edge size and then bring down the size of the brush and we're going to quickly just add like this, maybe just a single click to see what it looks like. Yes, and we're making some edges here. There we go. I'm not sure why there's a white background around here. We could probably just turn that off. I wouldn't do that. So let me turn off the white outline, turn off the ripple effects. And in fact, you just only really need a black outline. And we're going to do that right here like this. So we have a nice black outline. There we go. And if you want, we can also go to subtract with single clicks and even add some sections where it's kind of been broken up just a bit. And you can do the same thing with add, add little sections like this. It kind of looks like there's a transition between the background and the foreground, which is the interior, okay? So we'll add that. Let's go back to subtract and make maybe make a little bigger section. This, and I don't want to make it look too consistent because they're all these are all about the same size so we'll make one more right here okay so you have a little bit of transition between here and here and now you have to add in your rubble so we got to go into uh the stamp catalog that's with the f key and i think you can just type in rubble let me just check real quick there should be rubble and we might have to do some hsbc now you can do rubble again with stamps and tech and texture i do both because it allows for better blending. So first we'll start with uh, this rubble and it might not be the right color. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in here and just make sure that it's a similar color. Not so sure, let's boost the saturation and let's change the hue and see if we can find maybe some red or maybe just a hint of red and we might have to drop the brightness down a bit too. Okay, let's bring the size down. So there are a couple ways you can go about this. Uh, so for right now, this is like a draggable set. You can go like this, like that. Or you can go with your density brush and with an area and get this bigger area like this. Now when you're stacking, when you're stacking rubble, there is a suggestion that I would make, and that is the is stacking them on layers. So there's that bottom layer of rubble. And what you're going to do is using contrast to show depth. So the first layer, which is at the bottom, we're going to drop the brightness down quite a bit. Okay. Quite, quite a bit. So I'll bring it down. And I'm going to do a couple clicks to show the main rubble part. So let's add some here, some there. Okay. And we can do individual stuff and delete stuff as we go. Okay. Go up one layer. Make sure it's a layer above. Bring the brightness up. Oh, uh, maybe. 20% or so, make sure there's, there's a noticeable difference. Do a single click like this, single click, more rubble. Once you've done that, go up another layer, go up more. Let's just go with 100%. And I'm also gonna bring my area size down a little bit. And then I'm gonna add one, add a couple more, a little bit brighter right on top, like this. And the shadows might be trouble, troublesome, so we can get rid of those. But this is my technique when I'm showing layers of rubble. The bottom layer is the darkest. And you can group if you want to. You can group it if you want. That way you can select each layer and change it. I would recommend doing that. I didn't. That's an error on my part. But that bottom dark layer, you could group that, call that layer one. Then make sure it's set layer below. Add another layer, layer up. Bring the brightness up 10, 15, maybe 20%. Add that down 
and then add that final layer on top. Now the one issue that I see though is that this is kind of a drastically different color right here. So we might want to consider even changing it again and then adding maybe some red on the ground. So I realized that after I added it, that I saw something that didn't work. So let's go ahead and select all from this set and we'll select all of these. And let's maybe go with a different color. We could go with this grayish color. I think we can go all the way this way. Let me just check. No, that's purplish. Let me just keep going. Make sure I can find that blue. One second, there it is. And I think we might wanna consider dropping the saturation down just a bit. There we go. Okay, and the last thing we wanna do is also consider maybe messing with the shadows. I think they're okay, but let's also try to mimic this red right here. And I'm gonna go into textures right here. We're gonna look for a red that might work for that. So we'll go through and just take a look at what options we have. There's some red here, a broken red here. Let's just go through and see what other options just to make sure. Honestly, I think this red up here might work right here. Let's just apply it and see how far off it is from the red right here. We're going to tinker with it. So let me just apply red, make sure it's set to FG, my mistake, like this. Eh, I'd say it could lose a little bit of saturation. So let's just go to filters, drop the saturation a bit. Let me apply again. That's pretty dang close. I think that looks good. Let's switch over to edgy brush. We're going to do the same thing, remove the smooth option, and we're going to go down to three. And whenever you're working with the edgy brush, I always recommend dropping the opacity down in between 20 and like 10. Okay, because if you don't, then it, there is no soft edge on an edgy brush. So the opacity is going to be quite a bit more intense. So you want to make sure the number's pretty low. Okay, so let's go ahead now and just apply some of that to it. Let's just do one stroke to see how it looks like this. And you can just do single clicks like this. And we're going to make sure that that red is in there so that that way there's a smooth transition. So I'm just going to do single clicks, add in some red like this. There we go. And so it also kind of looks like blood. It could be this reddish mortar material or whatever the inside of that brick is. And then also you're going to want to do single clicks as well randomly. So turn off that area brush to one and then just single click a couple randos, just a couple rando rocks over here because it's going to, you want to show that some kind of fell off, add in a couple at a larger size, hold down that shift T mouse scroll wheel, add some smaller ones here and there, here and there, and then add some more smaller ones. Just go down a couple sizes, go to 10 and just single click, add in. That's a little too small, hard to see. Let's go up. Oopsie, let's go up even more here. Let's go up to, I think 16 should be okay. So we'll add a couple in here like this. All right, some rubble here. Let's go up even more than that. Let's go to 20 something. There we go. Just wanna make sure that they're visible and we'll address those coffins shortly. And I should probably save. So just one moment here. Uh, I'm at 200 changes. I like to save at 100, but I know some people like to be risque. And, uh, you know, 5,000 changes later. <laughs> I know, risky you, naughty, naughty. It's all right if you, if you lose track. Look, man, when you're adding rubble and you're painting stuff and you're doing your 30,000 strokes, of course you're going to, of course you're going to be like, oh my God. So don't be surprised, you know, if you accidentally have, you know, a couple thousand changes, you know, panic for a few seconds, which is okay. <laughs> Grab the bag, <sighs> calm down, do a little bit of yoga, you know, have a booch, relax, and then, ah, relax. then you can go back, okay? Save. Just remember to save, especially after a thousand changes, okay? Don't be in panic mode for too long. Life is already stressful as it is, okay? It's already stressful as it is. Don't make it any more stressful. Okay, so now we've added that red in there that I wanted. Some other things that I want to do is I want to show that there's also been some wear and tear on the ground. And don't forget to add that texture with some rubble on it as well. So we'll go look for rock. I think this rock right here might work. There's also a couple other ones as well. Uh, let me see here. There's this one. And I think there's another one as well. This one, I think... These look kind of flat, so I think I'm gonna go with, end up using these ones. And we're gonna to have to also play with that size. So I'm gonna bring the size down. 
And I also want to consider bringing down the brightness because I want it to kind of match, make it dark. And I want to make it dark enough to where it contrasts against that light. I kind of have a light, uh, this user, Corwin, they created a light ground texture. And so making a darker stones will make those stones stick out against that light texture. So always, as kind of like a pro tip, always do uh, contrasting. Contrasting is how you allow something to pop out. And that's a trick that all artists use is contrast. There's something called the focal point in a composition. And that's usually where the lightest light reaches the darkest dark. And that is called the focal point. Once you've finished with your focal point, your the user's or viewer's eye will start to kind of uh, meander a little bit, look at the composition, and then we'll go back to the focal point to rest the eye. Because that is how it works. When you look at a piece, you look for the focal point, that's that gonna be that contrast, light is dark. And then they're gonna meander and look around and then come back to the focal point to rest the eye. I know I just repeated myself, I'm good at that. I do it all the time. <laughs> All right, so now we have that. Let's go ahead and quickly just maybe apply some of that texture to it. I'm gonna go up all the way up to like 80. And let's just apply some single clicks, just throw them around. And these darker pieces are gonna to help to make a little bit more transition and create some contrast. Because you, when you, you look at this kind of explosion of all this rubble, how this took place, you really wanna emphasize that, right? You wanna emphasize the force the impact and adding a lot of rubble is what's going to do that. Now we also have to think about these other pieces right here. We'll go into that. Let's do one more thing. Let's add in some cracked ground. Okay. There's some great textures for this. I think there's one just called cracked ground right here. This one's going to work great, but you're obviously going to want to consider changing uh, the size a little bit because look how big it is at hundred percent. You always want to think about uh, like how big a piece is. So if I look at this piece uh, right here, it's a 75%, then you might want to consider having textures also being around that same one. Now you can go above and below, give or take, but I don't recommend going above or below too much. So you want to keep everything within relative scale, relatively, okay? It doesn't have to be 75% for every single thing. It's okay if you go above by a couple. That's all right, not a big problem. But try to keep things within the relatively the same scale. So we go to that cracked ground texture, and this is at 89%. We can go down to... 70 something and I, I can already tell you that it's a little too big so let's bring it down even more and there's that nice preview there so just kind of look at the preview and then stop where it looks good next step we're gonna apply the texture like this so you're gonna add some cracked ground in here and you want some of the highlights to pop out so make sure that you when you do some single clicks you make those highlights pop out so there's some white highlights there if you don't like that it didn't look good then you can just undo okay so there it is right there. You have this nice explosion. The next step is to take care of this. So I'm going to ungroup these so that I can mess with each one. And this one right here looks like it would be kind of pushed this way. And I might consider dropping it down a layer and maybe have some rubble being on top of it. So let's push that one. This one should be pushed out quite a bit. And if I find a broken casket, I will. And let's also push this one out like this because it's been pushed out and we'll put some rubble on top of that as well and that's going to be important and you know what's really fun about it is you can just grab the rubble right from the pile and just boom put it right on top so you don't even have to add new uh any new rock whatsoever that's the beauty of it you've added so much rubble that you can go right ahead and just throw it right on top oopsie that's the same piece i don't really want to do that let's also put some smaller pieces on here and put some darker ones up against here like this and so just move these pieces around and you see, think of it as like a palette all this is like a little palette that you can just snag a couple stones and move them around and that way you don't have to do extra work so it's always good to kind of do that so let's go ahead and throw in some of this let me see if there is a broken casket because that would be sweet if there isn't that's okay let me just check real quick broken we'll type that in boom where are you is there a broken casket is there a broken casket tell me I don't know. I'm not seeing any broken caskets in here. No, that's okay. Hey, we're going to break our own. Hey, who wants to break a casket? <laughs> Let's break a casket. Yeah. If there's not one, I don't see one. Where are you, Mr. Caskets? No, no. 
Not there. I'm not seeing him. We got to break one. Hey, who wants to break? Who wants to break a casket? Let's be irreverent and break a casket. Let's do it. Let's be irreverent. Mm. All right. So I would probably suggest using, first figuring out the force in which this was thrown. So it was right here before, like this, and it was pushed outward. If Let's say it was with great force. Maybe it slammed against the wall, and then it landed like this. I wish we could rotate it and change it a little bit, skew it, but we can't. So instead, we might consider a couple ideas. One, we can put down some clipping masks to make it look like it's been broken up. We could use a series of paths to make it look like there's cracks in the casket uh, and throw a bunch of rubble on it. We could flatten it and then paint over it with some stuff. So there's a lot of different options. Flattening is something that I pretty much like to avoid because once you make a mistake on top of that, you have to re-flatten it again, that object, to uh, the FGRBG. And that's really frustrating. And it's like, I don't want to do that. I don't throw a temper tantrum. Mm, I don't want to do it all over again. I hate doing something twice. <clears throat> I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna, instead, what I want to do is make it kind of look like it didn't... Um, make it kind of look like it just cracked these caskets kind of look like they're made of stone so maybe they could you know survive the impact survive they're not even alive but maybe they have uh some some cracks on it that show that it, there's some damage so we'll switch over to the path tool and as always i like to put a path down first that way it's right there on the screen and i can see live the the changes that i'm making to the path okay so first we're going to change the color to black and we're also going to turn off any shadows. So go over to shadow and make sure that both the blur and the opacity slider are down to zero. Okay. And then I'm going to look at that size. I'm going to move over a little bit because I don't want to, this to get in the way of this. And I'm going to bring the size down quite a bit like this. I think that looks about right. So that's good. So let's do it and delete that. Let's zoom in real close as close as we can get. And in fact, I'm going to zoom this up a little bit bigger and move it off to the side so I can work on it like this. So it's now it's kind of big and it's easier to work with. And I want what I want to kind of do is follow already the exist the pre-existing line work within the art to use as a guide to show where cracks will be. So let me just apply one on top real quick first to see. And because I resized it, I probably will have to bring up the size a little bit here. Okay, we get in nice and close. I'm gonna show a crack like right here. And first just kind of add in a black line like that to show where the crack begins. And you start with a main vein. So when you're doing a crack on anything, <clears throat> when you're doing a crack on anything, uh, be sure to make the main vein. Okay, that's that main crack. That's where the most stress is occurred on the structure or object, okay? Now that's the main stress uh, crack. Then from there, you want to create other cracks that branch off. Think of like maybe a spider web. Look at some cracks in a window. Um, look at the pre existing art, like right down here, for some inspiration on how you want to show those cracks. Because you, you got to show those cracks. Let me tell you something, okay? So we're gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and detail a little bit more of the main crack here, and then we'll add in some breakaway pieces like this. And you can make them smaller if you want. We can go down a smaller size because it's not the main, it's not the main crack. So, and yeah, I'll be saying crack for a little while now. So I mean, you, you gotta bear with me here, folks. It's just the way it is. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a two year old and I like saying naughty things. What can I say? I'm making that main crack right there. And then maybe add in some, Maybe just add in some pieces like this. And, you know, I'm using a tablet, so it's a little bit easier to do this. If you don't have a tablet, this might prove to be a bit more difficult. But feel free to just explore with it and try to kind of create cracks and little pieces to make it look like it's broken up a bit. So we'll do that. And let's add in some cracks right here. Maybe this is where the main impact was right here. So we can throw some big sections like this like that and maybe even right here one and then one right oopsie i selected it oh come on now escape button don't fail me now you can do it okay so we got some cracks right there i don't want to overdo it i could do this all day <laughs> so let's not do that let's go ahead and just select it all and make sure that you group it of course you, know, you can call it cracked coffin because you know that's what it is 
Okay, we got that selected. We can move it back down here. Boop, 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 boop. Make sure it's the right size. And we'll put it against it here like this. And we can even put some rubble on top around right here. So let's take a couple of these little pieces right here and just, let's see here, uh, put a couple on top like this, maybe on top right here, like this. That way some pieces are there. And maybe even go down to some smaller sizes. There we go. All right, I think that should be okay. Let me go ahead and zoom out. We're at 142 changes. Let's just save that, shall we? I am cursed with the mouse. No, your majesty, no. You must, you can't go without, you can't, just can't go without. No, no, no. You can, oh, I can tell you that a tablet is absolutely a worthy investment. I can tell you right now. Whew. But I know that they are terribly expensive, so I totally understand. If you don't got the budget for it, hot dang, they are not cheapy. Uh, there are some cheaper ones that are actually work pretty well. My first one was a Huion. Go ahead and look up the Huion. I think it's called the T100. It's actually not a bad. It works pretty good. doesn't require a powerful machine. It's affordable and it's easy to use. So check that out. Maybe it's pretty useful. I, it's a tablet I started with. Again, go check it out. All right. So we've created this kind of area that we've kind of exploded out there's a creature that came through here and you know it really if you uh if you want you can add as much details as you want you can add in more cracks more rubble uh all those things are are available to you so that's pretty much finished with this particular one we'll go to another map and work on that because we've worked on this for a half hour let's go ahead and move on to the next one okay and I will save it. Oh, it's already been saved. Oh, lucky. Let's go back. Is there any questions about this one? Uh, first, though, silly me. Is there any questions about this one or any suggestions that you might add? Like, Matt, you, Matty, you fuddled it up. What is this? What's this befuddlement you've made? Tell me if I miss something. You know, I'm not perfect, okay? If you, if you feel I missed something, be like, dude, you suck. You missed it. Add that immediately. Let me know. We'll make those adjustments. Would you add dust and clouds? Um, so it would depend if one, there's a light source to see the dust and maybe the rays of light going through the dust. Uh, if the impact is recent, like it just happened maybe just a few moments ago, an hour ago, you would expect some dust to rise from uh, the rubble as you would expect. So it depends on the time frame. If the, if this, a uh, break in the wall happened like 30 years ago, then you might not need to add any dust, okay? Now, if you're saying it's just a dusty place in general because there's maybe a draft that uh, flows on the ground of the dungeon and so therefore it kind of kicks up a lot of dust, then yeah, you could totally add dust. Uh, we could just add it just for fun. Let's just say this just happened, okay? So if this just happened, then we probably want to add uh, some dust. So how would I go about doing that? Lots of ways to go about it. I actually really like the clouds, excuse me, from the watercolor battle map style. These clouds are freaking awesome. And I use them all the time. So just type in cloud while you have the watercolor battle map style set up. And in that tavern pack, you'll see clouds. And one of the reasons why I like these clouds is because they don't have a baked in shadow at the bottom. And, and I'm sure all of you here who are Pro users know how wonderful baked in shadows are. Mm, they just make your life wonderful, don't they? You know, you're, you're working on an isometric piece and <gasps> this shadow, baked in shadow is destroying my piece. Yeah, believe me, I, I totally understand. I, I totally understand. So anyway, before I got a little carried away there, we're gonna put in this cloud right here. And I definitely recommend changing blend modes and opacity because it by itself at default is like well what is this this is what what is this someone fart what is what is this okay this isn't gonna work okay so we might want to do a couple things so you can change um the hue to whatever color you want let's say you want it to be this chalky blue and we want to drop the brightness down a bit and then we want to change the blend mode so we'll go through blend modes and see which one kind of works best We'll go through a couple. Oh, that one's kind of interesting. Whoa, that one's tripping me out. There's some soft light. Let's just go through. And you know what? If none of the blend modes work for you, there's always just dropping the opacity slider. You know, there's always that option. Oh, that's trippy. Whoa. What is going on here? 
Oh, that's tripping me, man. Whoa. Cool. All right, one more, one more. No, no, two more. Color and then luminosity. You know what? They all stink. And I don't like it. <laughs> oh. All right, let's go ahead and just drop the opacity. Sometimes blend modes just don't work for you. They can just be like a wet fart. It's just, dang it, just didn't work out for you. So just drop the opacity a little bit, and that's it. That's all you really got to do. Just drop the opacity, and there's some dust there for you. Honestly, I think it looks okay. Make sure it's set like a layer. Make sure it's set to the highest possible layer. You don't want to, let's say, drop it to where <laughs> the dust is just right here. It look kind of weird, right? So if you do decide to add any kind of dust, be sure to drop, bring it up a layer so it's above everything as you would expect since dust rises when it's been disturbed, okay? And then it finds its way somehow into your nostrils. And then, achoo! Okay, so I think that's it. We're going to save it. We're going to call it good. And then we're going to move on. All right? Let's just save that. Oh, a little dusty there. Got some dust going on. This place is probably filled with dust bunnies. And the undead custodian who has to watch this place, I feel bad for them. I hope they get a raise. Okay? They need a raise. All right, let's go back to the explore page here and move on to the next one. And this one is just this next one I found, which I thought was really good. I actually really kind of like it. It's made by Mapware. And it's called the Ghost Lord's Lair. Okay, and we're going to go into the Ghost Lord's Lair. And we're going to break it up a bit because there's a lot of lines, soft lines here, don't you know? I mean, look at all this. Look at all these nice hard lines. Just right for the breaking. It dem this map just calls for the demolition. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to clone and add this savvy map. The rocks fell on my dust. It depends on the Lich King. <laughs> Took like three seconds. Ooh, do, 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 do. We're moving on to the next one. So this one's made with the mask tool. And we already showcased a little bit in that first map how to deal with, um, how to deal with making broken... Um, broken walls when you're using the mask tool. So this right here is all made with the add mode of the mask tool, while this desert part is the BG layer. This is the FG layer. And you know, this is probably the quickest way to make a dungeon because that way you don't have to piece together walls endlessly like you're about ready to just tear out whatever hair you have left. Okay, so <clears throat> If you want to know how to make a dungeon quicker and you don't want to piece things together, I totally recommend just using the add mode of the mask tool against the BG layer, okay? It's kind of a quick way to put together a dungeon. I think I did a stream on that. Go check that out after this one, okay? All right, so let's talk about how the heck we're going to break up these walls. It's demolition time. I brought my, I brought my crane and the wrecking ball, and it's time to get this down. So a meteor fell through the roof of that dungeon, huh? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. How did you know that? <laughs> just, oh, I love that. Just the meteor just plowed right through. All right, so let's do a little bit of demolition, shall we? Let's see what we got here. Ooh, this person is very meticulous and well done in their groups. I'm impressed, I must say. I don't know. I kind of feel like a, a tornado made of bloody corpses is a, is a really kind of the best way uh, kind of an unnatural weather event that we can kind of use to, uh, I don't know, make it kind of fun. Maybe not this one. In this one, I just want to show how to uh, break up, how to break up a wall that's made with the mask tool and then how to apply textures to it to make it look like it's broken up. Now, this person did a really good job and they kind of like labeled <laughs> all of their groups. Naughty. I, yeah, I don't do that every time, if at all. Yikes. I shouldn't be telling you any of that, actually. No, I, I label everything perfectly. Wait, corpse tornado? Not natural? Cheryl, I don't know. I mean, I, maybe it's happened a couple times. I don't recall. It, I was really young at the time. I don't, I don't know. All right, let's break this stuff up. Yeah, very meticulous grouping. Very meticulous grouping. <laughs> nice grouping. All right, let's get this started here. We'll go over, turn off that smooth, bring down uh, the edgy feature size down to three. 
And I'm just going to apply real quick like this just to see how it looks. All right, you can do it. You can do it. Uh-oh, what is happening? Is it set to subtract? Oh, my bad. I had it backwards. Never mind. It's subtract mode. Is the interior. Don't listen to the guy who told you it was the opposite. He's an idiot. Yes, this organization is just satisfying to my eyeballs. My eyeballs are being massaged right now. It's very nice. This map is not ugly. It is beautiful. If it was ugly, I would have to scrub my eye with Brillo pads. Ah! A wild horde of pandas raided the place. Oh my gosh. Yeah, desert pandas. I love that. Desert pandas is, is the way to go. Desert pandas. Desert pandas assemble! Assault! Attack! I love it, dude. I love it. I love it. Okay, let's do this. All right, let's let's go ahead and do this. So I'm going to show up some broken ground. So we're going to go in subtract mode like this and just do a single click just to see how it looks. You might even want to include maybe a little bit bigger size. Let me undo that. Bring up this size to something bigger. Let me just see what it looks like first. Is it crazy edges? Yeah, that looks okay. Let's just do this. So you have some edges just like we did earlier. The way to show a broken wall when you're doing the mask tool is just to take that edgy brush, make sure those edges are not soft so there's some nice, straight, sharp edges, okay? You don't wanna have them be soft, so you want them to be nice and hard because we're not <laughs> you want them to be uh, hard edges and, um, and because you look at how you know nice and straight these edges are, so it's kind of obviously made of some kind of stone put together. So you want to show that like that it's breaking somehow. So using that edgy brush is the way to go. And you'll notice that they used some advanced settings, some mask uh, features to make it look like there's some shadows on the edges, and that always looks good. Me personally, I always recommend when you're making uh, uh, um, some kind of dungeon like this to always have one section that's broken up. And the reason why I recommend that is because when there's so much straight lines, so much symmetry, it can be a little hard on the eyes. So it's always nice to add one section or maybe a couple sections in your dungeon that are broken up, right? Because it's a dungeon, right? When I think of a dungeon, I don't think of a place that's got 24 custodial service, everything's clean, it's nice, it's it's a place where you could pick up like a pancake and just eat it right off the floor. This is not that place, okay? The 10 second rule does not apply here, okay? You understand? So break it up a bit, all right? Break it up. It's a dirty place, dungeons are not places where you do the five second rule, okay? So get that straight. So that section right here is broken and that looks nice right there. You can change things, add in some rubble. What I like to do whenever I do this is to use that same cracked ground te texture because cracked ground kind of really gives it like, oh wow, this is a broken area and the ground is broken uh, beneath it. So we'll go to that advanced settings. We're going to probably drop the size down. And for me, I just like to eyeball it and just see what looks good. And I want to make sure that a lot of the cracks show up there. So if you have to rotate it to get the cracks that you want. And what I really want is for the cracks to look like they're protruding out of the wall. So I'm going to maybe increase the size just a smidge. That was not a smidge. That was definitely not a smidge. That was huge. And then I'm just going to apply like this. So you want some of this broken ground to be in there. So now you have this nice transition right here. You have the, it looks like it's been ruined a little bit. Cracked ground is going to be your ally. So just think cracked a lot. Add that, you know what, just right away. I want you right now without question and oh, with your unfledgling loyalty to me right now to open up your catalog and to pick the cracked ground right now and then to add it to your favorites okay so it's right there in your favorites and that way you always have a little bit of crack and cracked ground in your life okay so that's important all right and we're going to do that to a little bit yeah crack is definitely your ally here cracked ground is the way to go i'm corrupting the minds of the youth i know i'm a bad person I'm so bad. I'm just an evil man. <laughs> All right, let's go back. Let's break in a couple stuff. So some things that I also like to do that's really fun is to cut a room in half 
and that can be kind of fun. So let's maybe continue with this room. This room kind of has the most amount of room area in it to work with. So let's just cut this room in half. Just crunch. This room has like a giant crevice in the center of it. And we're going to do the use the mask tool to do that. Or we could use something else. Uh, there are some cracks that you can use a cracked texture. There's also some chasms or chasms in the fantasy regional style that work pretty good um, because right now I don't know if this if these uh, these settings will work with making it in half let's just attempt real quick for fun to see how it looks I'm gonna go like this just boop -ba -doop -ba -doop. Ooh, oh you know what that's that's not the right that's not that's not that's not right I need to switch over to with the one key over to the okay the one key didn't work you naughty thing jerk not working meanie face all right, right now, Tab, here we go. We a little crack right here. I'm just going to see what that looks like first. If it doesn't, it might not work because it kind of looks like this is a wall right here, and I might not want that look. I mean, honestly, it looks okay. This might work. Uh, I don't know. Let's try adding in some single-click stuff just to add some transition here like this, and we'll just see what we got here the when it comes to uh, breaking things with the mask tool there's a little bit more versatile versatility i actually really like breaking stuff uh making break broken ground uh with the mask tool so that can be a lot of fun obviously i'm gonna have to go in and change some of these rocks locations and stuff like that so if you like a nice crevice here obviously i wouldn't paint this i would paint this black this part inside right here so let's just do that let's switch over to fg go to color make sure it's set to black and then just use that rectangle shape because there's a nice rectangle right here go across and then just click enter oops so let's go up just a little bit more like that and so now you have this nice kind of black cracked ground here i know it's kind of weird with this so if that's too much you can change it or add different things to it so it's really up to you how you want to go about it honestly the these uh, shadow settings kind of make it difficult to understand what exactly this is so instead we will get rid of that and try a different thing oopsie i made a mistake you know what making mistakes is great i just want to warn you right now making mistakes is great because then you know not to do it again you know like oh shoot i know i should never do that again that was dummy pants why'd i do that Super smarty, smarty farty over here didn't do it right. So I made a boo boo. I did an oopsie oopsie, and I, I am very sorry for that. So we're gonna fix that right now. Let's try something different. Uh, we could go also with a cracked ground texture, and there's also some stamps from I believe it's Fantasy Regional HD. There you are. Hello. We're crossing stamps. I just just a heads up. Uh, just be careful when you cross over stamps from from different styles because various art styles have different line. They're different different scale, uh, so that means the line work is going to also be thicker and thinner, um, and the coloring is going to be different. The texturing is going to be different. So just keep in mind that when you mix match uh, stamps, make sure that they're at least somewhat similar because it can look really weird when you throw in a regional stamp in a fantasy battle map or watercolor battle map especially when the line work is just so different the greatest example i can think of is when you put watercolor battle maps and fantasy uh battle maps because the line work is just so much thicker in watercolor battle maps it might not work with fantasy battle maps uh ooh. Ogre Smash. Oh, I don't think the builders would have tiled the floor or broken section at the top if it was not in the original floor plan. Shouldn't that be sand as well? Well, I mean, if something's being broken, no one really has the intention of having their building broken. I would assume it has to do with, you know, over a period of time, it's broken or a disaster or a collapse or a uh, mega monkey attack. I, I don't know. So, I mean, yeah, for sure. That's worth debating about. Um, Let's move over to here. It's a good question, Ogre. By the way, I appreciate you asking that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the original intention uh, with the artist and stuff, but just be careful. So let's just apply one right now. And with these chasms, they come with a built-in brown color. 
So it might not work. You see how this just, just totally contrasts against that. So if you want to add in like a broken pit or something fell down, make sure that whenever you add it on there, you switch right over to the blend mode luminosity and immediately it will take on uh, the color tone of the texture below that stamp. So luminosity is a godsend. Absolutely use luminosity, especially if the stamp that you're working with just doesn't match with uh, the overall color composition of the map. You can drop, you can change that luminosity and it will immediately at least be in that same color. Now you might want to change the contrast, the opacity and the lightness and, and darkness because sometimes textures are lighter or darker than the stamp that you're trying to apply luminosity to. So you might have to change things. So there are examples of that. Here I'll just show you when I bring the brightness down, you'll notice that the edges around it are too dark. And if I go up too much, you'll see that it's too bright. Uh, where it is is okay. It could be just a slightly brighter, I think, just to match in better. So watch as I bring the brightness up. You'll notice that it kind of matches just a little bit better. And then also you want to consider playing around uh, with the transform tool. And you can change the height. You can change the width and things like that. Now, if you're going to have a cracked, a big chasm like this, you would notice that uh, there wouldn't just be these nice tile right here. So there's a transition between a broken area and that's the similar to what we did right here. So I went ahead and took that cracked ground and, and saved it. Ooh, I'm so glad I added that cracked ground to my favorites. I'm so glad I did that. Did you do that? Naughty, naughty. I'm peeling carrots right now. I'm just doing my finger shaming you. Naughty, naughty. Make sure you add that crack round right now, young young people. Add that right now. Do it. All right. Add it in. Here we go. All right. I didn't do that. I am so mad and disappointed that I will do absolutely nothing about it. Okay? Nothing. <laughs> Except for guilt you. You're so naughty. <laughs> Okay, let's throw in some cracked ground. I'm getting so much pressure. Pressure, 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 pressure. No pressure, 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 pressure. Come on. All right, let's go ahead and add in our cracks because, you know, I mean, half of this stream has been dedicated to cracks, so we, we might as well, you right? Today is brought to you by the letter C, which is, uh, the word is cracked, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and make sure that we change the size and I'm gonna rotate it to make sure that a lot of the cracks kind of line up with the existing line art. And by that, I mean these cracks right here. You see these? Why do I keep using the dashy line? Dashy line doesn't show it. Naughty, give me the solid lines. Did I take some before the stream? Uh, no, I don't do crack, dude. I just drink coffee. Maybe at like coffee crack levels. I don't know, just coffee. And hey, you know what? People like humor and goofiness. If I'm serious all the time, you're just gonna fall asleep. Oh, Maddie's doing another stream. <sighs> Wake me up when it's over. Wake me up when it's over, please. So boring. You gotta be goofy. Okay, let's go ahead and throw in here. All right, I'm gonna add in my crack here. Here we go. There we go. Add in some crack ground just to create some transition. And if that don't work out for you, you can always just undo that. And instead you can go with a different technique because sometimes that crack ground might not work for you and it might not line up with the existing line art. And that's kind of frustrating, right? So the other option you have is you can continue on the line work yourself with the path tool. So let's just go ahead and just apply a path like that. And the objective is to mimic the path to be the same as the line work that's in the asset, okay? So what we'll do is we'll change it to, uh, I would say a brownish color. That's what it kind of looks like because I don't think it's pure black. Like here's what happens if I go to pure black. It looks like there's a little bit of dark brown in there. And then we're obviously gonna wanna turn off that naughty shadow. You would not the naughty shadow. What are you doing on? Ew, go away. And we're gonna do this just a little bit. We're getting there. We're getting there, and maybe we're gonna drop the opacity just a smidge. There we go. So I think that looks good to me. And so from there, you can kind of start building out 
sum of the ground by building off of the line work. So let's say that I want to kind of create a segment of a rock right here like this and then put in maybe another of a segment rock right here. Maybe put one in here like this, just like we did with the, um, what was it, the uh, the casket. We added in some line work to kind of further the transition between the ground texture. And we will get rid of uh, this these parts of this tile right here because it wouldn't be nice and uh, flat like that. There would be stones kind of turn overturned and there'd be a little bit of chaos around these edges. We need to give blood to the Chaos Lord. The Chaos Lords require it. Okay, that's how it goes. Yes, I am a total goofball, 100%. Look, man, hey, look, man, you can't, just can't be serious all the time. Shit is so, sh stuff is so, stuff is so serial. It's like, yeah, I need a little, little break in your lives, right? Just take it easy, you know? Gosh, things get stressful, right? All right, let's go into that textures and we'll kind of look at options we have. There might be a broken desert texture in there and if it is, that would be beautiful. Tell me, are you in there? Why so serious? Oh no, there's a no broken texture here. This is boo poo poo. What about this one? This is I like this. There's a lot of artifacts in this one. Uh, maybe we can boost the contrast. To, Get a little bit more. There we go. Now we're talking. Size it down. I want some of those artifacts to pop out a bit. And let's go with that edgy brush. And then let's bring the opacity down. And then we're going to apply this real quick and just see how this kind of looks. Let's just do a couple clicks. This texture might work. It's got some nice. Um, it's got some nice kind of broken uh, artifacts in it. So let's go up to 100% actually, or 45% so I can add a little bit more in. Doing some single clicks here. And then we can add in uh, the sand a bit. So I'm gonna see, use single clicks to kind of create some transition like this, okay? And then from there, oopsie, that didn't work like I hoped it would. Well, that's just poop. That didn't work, go as planned. Dang it. Okay, now I can go in and take that sand texture and I'm gonna use a soft brush. I think actually, let me just check the recently used to see that it's in there. Just to verify, one moment please. There it is right there, perfect, all right. And then I'm gonna turn off that edgy brush because sand's not gonna have these strange kind of straight lines in them, at least I don't think so. So instead, I'm just gonna boost that softness, make sure it's all the way up. Set this down, and I want to break up some of those lines because I kind of made a boo-boo. And now you're not going to do that at home now, will you? You're not going to do that. Good, good. Don't do that. Don't make the same mistakes that I made. And I'm just going to go in and kind of just break up some of my my oopsie poopsie. Oopsie. I did no, I, I Oops, oops. My bad. Okay. There we go. I think I should save it because I'm at like 200 plus changes. So let's just save this. Wee! Save time. Oh yeah, the orc texture. Ooh, that's a good idea. You know what? That might work better. Ugh, should have listened earlier. Now I want to do that. And I just did all this work right here. Oh, well, your way is going to work better, Cheryl. Let's do it. <laughs> all right. Okay. Where are you, lovely orcs? Hello. There you are. Oh, right here. Yeah. Oh, man. Why didn't I? Oh, gosh. Brain set to lower function right now. My bad. Yeah, this would have been so much better. Where is my brain today? My bad. Yeah, no, let's use that. I kind of like that. Let's go up a bit. And oh, yeah. Oh, so much better. Gosh, you know, I'm so glad there's someone on this team who uses their brain, because it's not me. Yeah, that works for me. I'm, I'm digging it. I'm gonna do it. Let's do it. Yeah, baby, some crack ground. And then, so now that you've added that in, I'm just gonna call it good, looks pretty good. Maybe delete some of these. Just a little too much action going on here. Uh, I also wanna throw in some rubble. Let's say that 
uh, like since this is this ground is kind of broken up we want to include some kind of rubble right so let's go in here and I think let me just go down real quick we can type in rubble again oh but the rubble is not found in fantasy regional HD it's in battle maps 2.0 Minari I hope none of you can hear that really loud annoying lawnmower in the background it's distracting why are you mowing lawns it's just grass man it grows everywhere Okay, let's type in rubble, and there might be some desert rubble, so I'd, oh, yeah, perfect, right there, some desert rubble, let's see, let's use this one, let me just take a look and see, yeah, let's bring it down in size a bit, and then if it doesn't match right, I can, al I can also change uh, just the luminosity, so it kind of fits more to the ground color, let's, do, let's just do that and just see how it looks first, what I always like to do is start with large stones first, uh, this is this, this monotony of size issue. I call it that. It's not an official term. But generally, uh, oh, I overpower the lawnmower. That's right, lawnmower. You hear that? You've got competition, you bastard. Okay, so uh, first what I like to do is just kind of, when I like to do the rubble, I like to start with large rocks first and then put little rocks around it. Because if all your rocks are the same size, that's going to be like kind of weird. Like, wait a minute, there's no uniformity in rocks like that. That's weird. So I will take some larger rocks first and kind of place them down. So I look for the bigger ones. I put a larger one here and a larger one maybe over here. Maybe show some kind of... I don't know where how the debris got there and just throw in uh, a couple more then bring it down to maybe say 40 let's go 30 and just put a couple down like this around the edge and then after you've done that bring it down even smaller and then you can start throwing down those pieces and you can even throw in uh, a texture too it just depends on how much work you want to do obviously if you're a dm and you're like wait a minute i need to have this map done tomorrow at 3 p.m right so you're in a rush okay so maybe you don't want to go through all right i have to add this and then i have to texture this and then i have to add the rock and then i gotta do this and you know, and you're like, wait a minute, I'm not necessarily an artist, I'm more of a DM, right? So it just depends on the how much detail you want. Obviously, the more detail you add, the better the transition is going to be. But it's okay if you don't have tons of details. You don't have to be an artist. That's okay. Map making, being an artist is only a part of being a map maker. There's still utility. There's still scale understanding a bunch of other things so being an artist isn't the number one prerequisite for for building maps though it definitely helps it's not like it's a problem for you so we've kind of created this right here and honestly this is okay we could have gone with a bunch of other stuff but for now i think this is okay shut up lawnmower no one's talking to you all right i'm gonna save it and just call this one good and we can kind of move over to the next one Keep asking your questions, okay? Keep them coming. That lawnmower is such a jerk. So distracting. All right, boom, boom, going to the next one. Hey, maybe you guys should decide the next one. I don't know. Let's go through, what's next? We've been going for an hour. I say we just keep on going unless you guys have more important things to do. I don't know. It, it literally is just right outside. Literally, it's like probably about 20, 30 feet away from me. And I am deeply sorry for that. Hopefully, they'll bugger off soon. Yeah, deeply apologize for that. Dang, you jerks. Maybe I have to change the schedule maybe to have the streams be a little bit later in the morning so we're not picking up that lovely munchy sound, that lovely murr. It's like, oh, I feel like I live in a live in a water closet or something holy smokes all right let's go through this remember it has to be fantasy battle map because we can't pick up we can't do a map that is done with a uh, different style so we're gonna go through and it has to be clonable and it can't be massive please we're not gonna pick a massive massive one let's just take a look oh good yeah keep it down buddy 
Uh, let's keep going here. Ooh, this one's kind of cool. We kind of did like those kind. Let's do a different one. Something different, man. Let's take a look here. I don't want to do a giant one. So it's got to just keep scrolling until we find something here. I don't know. Ooh, this was a fun one. Where are ya? Oh, I don't know. That one already looks kind of broken. Oh, I'm loving that new stuff. Oh, gosh, love that. So many good maps right now made with, um, I pointed at mine. <laughs> Look how great mine is. Sorry, I didn't mean to point at mine and say that the Babylonian art was fantastic. I meant to, buy, to do Weiss and Cascadians. One is epic. Hey, do you like my stuff? It's so good. I'm sorry. I love this stuff. It's fantastic. Oh, awesome stuff. Okay, let me just keep going here. I'm going to want to find something that I can kind of like break it's not gonna be too much oh yeah who wants to break a police station i do okay let's do it let's let's break a police station thank you benjamin wesserman for providing this providing us with this lovely establishment that we will now destroy let's do it what happens if like a tree fell through a building i don't know maybe we should go with like I don't know, a whirlwind made of zombie unicorns or something. That would be cool. I don't know how I would make a bunch of zombie unicorns, though. So that might not work. Though that is a cool idea, and I'm definitely keeping that for a later map. Don't worry. We're going to be doing that. Hello, hello. Welcome, Dragon Spawn DM. Hello. Glad you're here. All right, let's do this. Hey, look, another person who just is so wonderful in their organization. It burns my eyes with guilt because I don't do this. I just feel like I'm inferior now. Look at all these people just nicely putting together their maps and labeling them correctly and locking them in place. I mean, it's just, it's so beautiful. I really feel insignificant now. Now I just have to group all of my, <laughs> group and label all of my maps now. Gosh, dang it. How dare you set these incredible, unbearably difficult standards? How dare you? Didn't you know you could group and label? Oh, you totally can group. You totally should, too, because grouping and labeling is, one, it makes it so much easier to find your stuff because you don't want, like, 50 million. Like, if you've got, like, 6K objects on your map and you're just like, okay, I mean, do I have to scroll for 20 minutes to get to the bottom of the list? I got to go to the bathroom. Come on, my favorite podcast is on in like five minutes. Okay, so grouping is the way to kind of do that, okay? So grouping and definitely label it because if you have like 80 groups, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I have to select every group to see which group is the group that I want, okay? So, you know, take care of your groupies, okay? Take care of them. Oh, King, my maps are utter chaos. I, I, I'll group something and then not group some things. And people are like, oh my gosh, the inconsistency hurts. It hurts. Why? How can you, sh wait, 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 can you show how you group? Oh, absolutely. This map is not the right map to do that, but we'll go up here maybe and put in a couple goodies here. So grouping is not hard, actually. It's quite easy. So you go ahead and just place more than one stamp. That's the trick. You obviously can't group one stamp. That would be weird. Hey, I'm going to group this one stamp. Now, there, there is an exception to that, and I'll show you that. But So once you've selected, so go to your selection tool, cl click, hold, drag, go over the selection that you want, and then group it. Now, sometimes you might have a whole bunch of stuff on your map and you keep accidentally selecting other stuff, like let's say some text or something. Just go right up to that selection tool, options, select all to turn off all the options, and you only want to pick up stamps. So just click this stamps right here and you'll only be able to select stamps. So if I had some text right here like this and it's kind of in the way and I only have uh, these group this selected I'll only select the stamps and not the text so make sure that you absolutely use these kind of options especially in a busy map because the busier the map the harder it is to select stuff I'm sure that you've noticed that you're like I just want to select this thing right here I but I no oh ah! 
I'm sure some of you have had that experience. And let me tell you, it is not a way that you want to wake up in the morning. It is terrible. So grouping, uh, using that selection option is really going to help you, okay, in those sticky situations. Now, once you've selected it all like this, there is a couple ways you can group. Right at the top, you'll see the option to group, okay? And then you can edit the group and then ungroup. Now you can just select the, I think it's command or alt key, depends on what kind of keyboard you're using. Let's go over to shortcuts real quick and we'll go to object stamp tool. Oh, I think it's gonna be select tool, group selected. So if you just press the G key, so you have some of these selected, press that G key and boom, it's already grouped. Boom, just like that. And if you want, you want to make sure that you label the group because you're like, well, what is the group? What's in it? It's just a group. You know, put something in the title that kind of lets you know what the fudge it is, all right? So you go in here and you just type in lily pads or something, whatever it is you want. Some LLP, lily pads, okay? We're going with some shorthand here. It looks like IP instead, but it's an L, okay? Just deal with it. Lily pads, okay? Or maybe you secretly discover that I don't know how to spell it, and that's why I'm doing it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so that's how you group, okay? So select the stamps that you want, press that G key, or you can just press that group button that will be up here. Now you can put one thing in a group. You could just delete. Oh, oopsie. I did not mean to do that. Silly, silly boy. And I'm just going to delete every single one except one, and you'll end up actually having this still be a group. Okay. One cool thing about groups is that having uh, with groups, you can have actually more object layers. So if you look carefully right here, you'll see that there is these object layers right here. And when you have groups, you can actually increase the number of object layers that you can work with. And that actually makes it really useful. So let's say, remember earlier we did that rubble and I made the lower part of the rubble dark. And then I, I said you should group it. Um, so let's say that you already have a bunch of stamps underneath, like up to layer five, and you want to put more stuff on top of that. Group some stuff, drop the layers, and boom, there you go. You can add more stuff on top of it. So groups are extremely useful, and I should probably do a stream on groups, like just completely dedicated to groups, and that way we can really have an in-depth tutorial on how to operate groups, because there is quite a bit going on with groups. So I'll be sure to uh, do a tutorial on that, and I'm excited for that. All right. Is there any other questions? Anything else I should showcase while we're over here? Uh, if people have questions, let me know. I don't mind going outside of just breaking uh, things. We can make it last a little bit longer. It looks like Twitch actually favors the longer streams, and more people can get on and watch, so that's cool. Uh, I just did that. Oh, I think that would be very helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Clipping masks, or not clipping masks, I'm sorry. Um, knowing how to use groups is extremely useful. And I'll make sure to maybe include that in next month's stream. I do want to do a stream that's just completely dedicated to uh, breaking down the entire editor. Every single tool, every single feature, every single little to toggle box, every single uh, hot bar every single shortcut key. We're just gonna do that. And that's gonna be a nice long stream and I can go in there and just make highlights and clips from that stream. And that way you guys have kind of a database that you can go to and be like, how the fudge do I use this tool? Well, boom, go to the highlight that says in depth how to use the, um, how to use the, the brush tool, how to use the mask tool, how to use the path tool, which really isn't a path tool. But for the sake of this, Argument, yeah, for the sake of it, yeah, we're just gonna call it the path tool. I don't, it's the whatever tool. It's the all tool, the magic wand tool, whatever you wanna call it, all right? Yeah, I knew you would love that. I knew that would be a good idea. So yeah, definitely, that will probably be next month and we'll just break down every single tool in utter boring detail until you pass out in your chair, okay? That's gonna happen. So buckle yourselves up for that, folks. Oh, hey, Cheryl just mentioned, don't forget to join our Discord. I totally agree. You should totally join our Discord. Our Discord users are the very best, and I will have a duel to the death with you if you disagree. I swear it'll be pistols, 50 paces, 20 paces. Let's do 20 paces, okay? It will be a duel, okay? So don't ever question it. 
Our Discord peeps are the best. Okay? They're awesome. <laughs> yeah, definitely join our Discord because, hey, we have the best mods like Cheryl. We have great artists, mentors that want to help you. You can ask any question. It's also a safe community. You don't have to feel threatened. We respect people. It's a great community. Go check it out. It is awesome. Depends on the range of the gun. Well, hey, man, I mean, I was thinking single shot, you know, pistols, you know, nothing special. Like, uh, I'm not going to, like, go to a pistol duel with an AK-47. But, you know, I mean, hey, single shot. All right, single shot. Add the gunpowder. We're going old school here. All right. All right. All right. I think I've dilly-dallied long enough. I think it's time to go back to breaking stuff. Look at this. There's one called Walls. I mean, this is beautiful. I could just go right in to this and just, boom, mess with the walls. Great. I love it. Awesome. All right. All right. So what do we got here? We got a nice pond right here in the back here. Uh, there's not much exposure on the sides to make something broken. So, and these look like jail cells. So, I mean, hey, you know what this looks like to me? Prison break. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's bust out of this joint. We didn't do anything. We're innocent, okay? We're busted out of this joint. Let's do it, folks. You guys ready to rumble? Let's get out of here. How dare they put us behind bars? Jerks, we're getting out of here, all right? We're doing it. How do we want to do this? I'm going to just goodbye, Wall. It was it was a pleasure knowing you. You're you're going away now. Adios, Wall. It was it was a pleasure. But it's time to add it in. So what happens if maybe, uh, let's say that maybe some, uh, maybe our, some friends that we have on the outside came in with their little submersible or whatever creature and they kind of tethered a rope to the bars and then tethered it to their creature and then boom, pulled that wall out and collapsed and then we all just swam to freedom, right? Or maybe some kind of distraction needs to be happening outside, you know? Like maybe there's some people out here on a cart throwing off fireworks, acting like a distraction. Hey, you, Bobo, over here. Look, look over here. Don't look over there. <laughs> that only gives it away just a little bit, right? <laughs> hey, Mr. Police Guy person, don't, don't look in the cells. Look over here. <laughs> Dead giveaway, right? <laughs> okay, so they're es we're going to escape this joint. Okay, we're getting out of here. So let's look at some ruined stamps. You can do it. You can do it. Oh, slowing, loading a little slowly. Bear with me, folks. Bear with me. Houston, we have a problem. Okay. Let's type in broken. You can do it. There you are. I found you. All right. All right. I think this is the, which, which wall is this? Ooh, I think this is the temple wall. Let me just select this real quick. It, marble plastered wall. I don't know if there's a broken element, a broken version of that. So let's go down to temple and just see. Um, This broken white marble. And then let me just take a look. Uh, I don't know if that will work or not. Let me just check. One sec. Let me go back to temple here. Yeah, I think this is an entirely different different thing. So it's, unfortunately, we're gonna have to like work with this set. Uh, let's go with dropping the saturation all the way down so it's more of a gray and then dropping that brightness down. I'm not so sure because there isn't a broken piece actually for this set. So we'll have to kind of gerrymander, uh, kind of jerry rig a little bit, change this up a bit. And this will be kind of a pain, unfortunately. Um, that or we can piece together our own wall with uh, stone pieces. Let me see if there is that. One second, let me type in rubble and maybe we can piece it together ourselves. There's a certain rock that we have to use, kind of a stone rock that might work. Like this one right here looks kind of good. Let me type in stone and see if maybe they have uh, those, a brick-shaped rock that we can work with that somewhat resembles uh, the stones in that wall set. And nothing that I can see here. 
Uh, this one might work. They're kind of big. So what we're trying to do is mimic uh, a single brick like this. Let me just go down like this. So you see the single brick like that. What we want to do is kind of mimic that. I'm going to turn off the shadow. I don't want that on. Go to saturation and maybe drop the brightness down. Unfortunately, it just doesn't match uh, exactly the same. So if that ends up being the case, I recommend applying a filter to, to do that. So maybe adding like a red filter, red sky, or uh, any other filter to kind of help to make sure that that stone matches the same stone that's in the wall. And filters are the way to kind of do that. Just again, to give you a heads up, okay? Let's also click that same set and pick some smaller pieces that we can add to the end first uh, because it's the tension point that's going to have the most destruction. So this part right here can still be kind of good and we can even add another piece that's a little bit longer here and it's okay. So we can add that here, here. And there are some uh, shackles here that we have to remove. These are supposed to be against the wall. And I definitely recommend uh, kind of rotating some of the wall pieces just a hair. So I take one piece and just rotate it this way, copy, paste, rotate it the other way. And this is to kind of show stress in the wall to show that like something had happened a little bit. So it's nice to have that there. Let's go ahead and push this up. And then I will probably rotate this one just a hair this way. Let's push it this way. So I can see a little bit of angle, copy, paste, and go the other way. And we're gonna show, like again, we're trying to show stress in the wall. Okay, and I think, let's take a zoom out real quick and just verify to see how that looks. So far, so good. And then from there, we wanna take these individual stones and let's do something different. Let's see, this layer is layer one. This one is layer one. Let's go down a layer, okay? And then let's also drop the brightness down. And what we're gonna do is show the continuation of the wall at its base, but not higher up. So let me just show you a real quick diagram just to make sure that, that you understand how, if that makes any sense. Sometimes when I describe something, it's like, what the fudge, so, fudge the coals are you talking about, Maddie? That just doesn't make any freaking sense, dude. So I'm gonna real quickly just kind of draw a little bit of a diagram to show what I'm talking about. So let's say this is part is this wall right here, like this, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna show this. I wanna show like some destruction like this. So this section, the corner of the wall has collapsed. How am I gonna show that in a top view perspective. How do I do that? Like, hmm, 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 hmm. How do I do that? So the way to go about that is, again, to use that contrast trick to show that some stones are higher up and that some are below. And I showed you that trick earlier in, in the first map. Let's apply that again right here. So let's take this rock right here. And this is going to represent, real quick, let me just go back to this so you can kind of see it. This part right here, this way I can kind of show Come on, why are you not working? There we go. Hello. Let me just copy and paste this and I'm gonna delete it. I wanna put it within this wall layer so that I can be within the same layer. So I'm gonna show you what it is I'm gonna be working on one second. So I wanna show these rocks right here, right here. Okay, so this section right here. And so how am I gonna go about doing that? So I'm gonna take these stones and the lighter the stone, the higher up it is. The darker the stone, the lower it is. So let's bring the brightness down. And let's just leave it there for medium right now. And then we can go into the other. And we'll just flip, rotate, and go through a couple more like this. And now we've done those two. Let's do this one as well. So we'll put one right here. Let's just make it separate and then add another one like that. Okay. So now that you've done that, let's also take it down another layer. So it's below, bring that brightness down. Okay, let's go ahead and make sure that I have kind of a long one like this. And let's even bring the brightness down even a little bit more, okay? And put another one right there. And let's put one longer one right here. And then we can put an even longer one right there, okay? And so what we've done is kind of created the collision, kind of created the, where that part kind of cracked and broke right here. So that's what you have right there. Now, obviously, there's some transitioning that you're going to want to show. 
between here and here. So that means putting some rock and rubble underwater. That also means rotating some of these stones just a bit to show that the in, that the uh, that it's gone outward. So I'll rotate this one just a little bit this way. Rotate this one just a little bit this way. And show a little bit overlapping too so that it looks like there's just some chaos there. Because if it's perfectly lined up, that might look weird. So let's rotate this one a little bit. Let's take this one and rotate this one just a hair up. This one just a hair up. There we go. There we go. Just to kind of make it look like that fell through. Okay, so now we have that. Now let's take a step back and just see how it looks. And we want to factor in if what layer is what. So I need to know if this is the add mode, if this is the subtract mode, what is it? So let's go to our tool here and just put a swipe with the add mode and just see what that does. And it looks like it's all set to the BG layer. Okay, that's that's great. If it's all set to one layer, it's a little bit easier to deal with. So that's actually quite nice. So we'll do that right now. I've de I'll delete this. We no longer need this. I just have to go back into the wall section and delete that. And I hope that helped. So one first thing we want to do is fix this kind of gray area down here. It looks like a stone texture was used. Let's go in the history and just see if it's used and recently used. It wasn't. So we have to go and now, unfortunately, go and resize. So this is why it's important. Um, this is kind of just a pro tip right here. Immediately, whenever you edit a texture, whether it's the size, the hue, the saturation, whatever, and you intend to use that texture again, I absolutely recommend favoriting that texture. So that way you don't have to edit that texture again, okay? So if ever you edit a texture and for sure you're gonna use it, favorite it right away. So let's go over to finding where that texture is. I believe it's a cobblestone. So you have this nice cobblestone here. In fact, I think it's actually the mossy one instead. Let's click that. Let's go over to advanced settings and size and see where it's at. You see it's huge. And it doesn't have to be perfectly the same size. That's okay. But relatively around the same size is what you're going to be going for, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's apply it like this. And ooh, It looks a little bright. So let's actually go in and drop that brightness down just a hair. There we go, keep going, keep going. Let's apply it and just see how it looks. Yeah, that's a little bit better, there we go, okay. So we'll go ahead and do that, add it in like this. That should do just fine. So we've fixed that part. So the next part then is to obviously include some rock and rubble, and I did make some mistake here. You'll see that this texture is so dark against this dark right here, and it kind of doesn't work. So we might wanna actually consider even brightening it up just a little bit more. I kind of made an error there. We want some contrast. So when I look like this, there's not enough contrast for me to see these darker stones right here. So I'll go ahead and just make it just a teeny bit brighter so that I can see some of that stone, just a bit, okay? There we go. Now I can kind of see that stone a little bit better. That's nice. Next part is that we want to show the kind of debris that uh that that took place from this uh this basically this prison door this prison window this bars prison bars being torn out of the wall okay so how are we going to portray that let's start with the first stuff you would expect some rocks and stones in the water so let's take these smaller rocks right here and depending on how deep your water is that will determine the size of the stone in the water, okay? So if the water is deep, obviously your stone is gonna be a little bit smaller. If it's not very deep, then you can make the stone a little bit bigger, okay? And if you're limited by size, okay, if you're limited by size, like the 10%, all you gotta do is just zoom in, look for these hot bars, and then you can do that. Now just know that when you go below the minimum and maximum numbers, that these will now be slightly blurred even on 8K export. And the reason why is because you've gone beyond what the tool can tolerate for how crisp that stamp is. So if you go below 10, if you go above 500, expect some blur with that stamp. So there is a caveat. There is a little bit of a, hey, keep this in mind when you do this. 
Okay, so that's super important. Factor that in. Let's just say this water is somewhat deep, and so we'll make the stones that size. Let's go with luminosity, and you'll see that that stone is there. Now this water seems kind of dark, and I don't think that you would see the stone that much. So let's drop the brightness. That's a good start. We can do that. And we could also drop the opacity, or we can change the contrast. It's up to you. Uh, if you're going to have a lot of stones on top of each other, then you don't want to go with opacity because then you'll be able to see the other stones below you. So the way to fix that is to go straight up with changing the contrast. You can do that, or you can just straight up blur. You can straight up just blur the stone as well. It's up to you which way you want to go about it. Me personally, uh, at this size, the blur just makes it completely invisible because it's just so small. So don't go with blur. Instead, go with a contrast. And then once you've done that, you can go in and just single click, put a bunch of rubble on the ground like this. And I'll make sure to select all those again as well and change them to luminosity. So just one second, I, you should, I should do that beforehand. Just, just as a heads up, just so you know, whenever you're, um, if you want a stamp to have all the same uh, attributes here in the HSBC and the transform, you're going to want to first do it when you before you've placed it. So this preview right here, you want to go in and change the blend mode right away, okay? Because then as you're placing it, it will already be in that blend mode. So I kind of goofed and uh, edited a stone that I had already placed. Make sure that you instead uh, go straight to uh, luminosity and do that just right away. Okay, so just kind of factor that in. And I'm going to go ahead and take these stones and kind of rotate them so that it looks like uh, the rubble is kind of spanned, panned out a little bit. Let's go ahead and move here, over to here like this, and one over to here like this. And you might even want to consider making some larger ones. That's okay. And I'm going to make it make sure it's below. So let's take a larger one, a layer below. And you can even make that stone just a little bit darker if you want, like that. And then add in a couple ones underneath as well. They're just a little bit bigger. You can do that. Also dark. Oopsie. I, again, I made that same poopy mistake. Always remember to make your changes beforehand, before you're placing, okay? If you want all your rocks or whatever to be at luminosity, change that setting before you place them, okay? Uh, this is a mistake that I make so freaking often. Look, guilty as charged, just to let you know. <laughs> I'm guilty of this all the time. Okay, so let's go ahead and add in a couple more rocks, change that brightness. There we go. I think that looks okay. There'd probably be a little more than that, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. Uh, the next step is to kind of create uh, some more rubble, some dust, some dirt, stuff like that. So you can use small, the small rock texture uh, that we used just open it up here and I think there is some uh, little rocks that we can throw in here oops see what is this oh only free now how did that get selected naughty okay let's see where are you there you are let's go ahead and go to saturation or to placement and let's uh, oopsie let's make sure the size is down let's change that size a little bit of rock. Uh, considering it's debris, very small fragments, I would go with the smallest size. And you're gonna wanna also make sure that the brightness isn't so ridiculously bright, uh, but also bright enough to where it contrasts against the ground. Let's just apply real quick first and just kind of see how it looks. I'm kind of okay with that. Let's go drop the opacity down quite a bit uh, because I wanna retain uh, this greenish color and so if I was to go 100%, you'll notice that it looks weird, right? So I could, you know, Alt-Z, Control-Command-Z, Control-Z, whichever what it works for you. I drop that opacity down quite a bit, and you'll see that the stones actually retain some of the green of the water because you've dropped the opacity. So that adds in a little bit more rubble there, and you could even add even more force by just kind of angling this even more. If you wanted to, you can get even more force. Just keep going, more and more force. There we go. And maybe even push this one out. Maybe even have some of them separate, like that on the ground. We could go in with a smaller one, like this, rotate. Oopsie, I just 
working within a group can be uh fr- excuse me can be frustrating sometimes folks let me tell you there we go let's add in some small rocks here maybe even one that's overlapping right here there we go oopsie let's put that on top that doesn't make any sense let's not do it. that naughty okay oh and let's oh so it's half underwater and half not that kind of works kind of well because we set it to luminosity awesome okay i think that's okay so far let's go ahead and make a save almost 200 changes yikes is there a floating shackle on a broken wall you know look dude look let me tell you something right now my friend floating shackles are in floating shackles are in have you not checked check vogue magazine floating shackles are in i'm telling you right now floating shackles are in Yes, I will delete the floating shackles if I can find it. Everything's so nicely organized. I don't even know where it is. Where would I start? Let's take a look. Maybe it's in the present section. Ah, there you are. I found ya. Sweet. All right. And we can even like, I don't know, rotate this a little bit. Like that. And let's make it darker. Like that. And this one's okay. Let's have the bucket kind of like fallen over instead just to kind of give it a little more dramatic. And then we also want to include maybe uh, some rope, the bars uh, in the water to make it look like it was torn out. So let's go ahead and do that. Floating shackles are to imprison ghosts, right? Absolutely. Look, hey, maybe the wall's invisible. You never know, right? <laughs> no, good catch. I'm glad you mentioned it. Thank you very much. I fixed that. So much appreciated, always listening to all of your suggestions because this dummy brain, this soft spaghetti brain over here can't do it alone, okay? This pota mashed potato brain needs help. Oh, and mashed potatoes, by the way, are delicious. Just not the ones that are in my brain. Don't eat those. That's gross. Unless you're a zombie who likes, unless you're a zombie and I guess that's acceptable. All right. Yeah, yeah, no, that sounds good. Yeah, it's okay then. All right, let's go ahead and do prison bars. Okay, this one's going to be kind of tough because there isn't really like any prison bars in a front-facing view. So we're going to have to, Jerry. We're going to have to, you know, break stuff. And hey, that's the theme of this stream. Oh, 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 oh. looky there! All right, I think we can probably just use like this kind of grate right here and kind of use it as a prison bar, and we can put a knot on it and some rope be naughty you know and then uh kind of show that this rope and then it's been pulled out to make it look like it's fallen so let's go ahead and do that i don't remember what it's called maybe it's called a grate i haven't seen it let me just check is it called the grate are you there no not to not to oh this is kind of cool though this actually might work better i don't know no 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 actually i think we're gonna use uh that other one instead let's do that i think it might be in prison are you in prison i need to know if this stamp is in the naughty the naughty place are you in prison stamp they're in stamp prison stamp purgatory stamp limbo okay you know what it's just lagging so much i think i'm gonna scroll and try to find it without having oh, oh you know what heck i'm in broken that's Look, my mind is broken, folks. This stream broke me. Maddie's brain has been broken. You see, I'm telling you, we're sticking to the theme here. Maddie's brain is broken. Woo! Okay, all right. Where are you? No, no, don't be naughty. Load now. You still have an, a, a broken filter. Oh, do I have a broken filter active? What? There's a... Oh, thank you. Oh, I see. <laughs> Jesus. Broken streamer. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I am the broken. <laughs> okay, you know, I kind of like this grate right here. It kind of has that prison bar look. I know there's one right here, but I kind of think of like the trope kind of just single bars going down. So I think this, oh, it's under grates. So it's plural and not singular. You know what? It should still be able to, to find the grates. What's with the S here? All right, let's do this. All right, we're going to add it in. Let's see here. Is there another window here? There it is. There's an actual window right there. So we're going to have to factor in its size. Now, since it's probably going to be underwater, we can scale it down. And thank goodness, because at this scale, 
you can kind of see a lot and that's not going to work. So let's go take this up right here. I'm going to put it like maybe right there and I'm obviously going to change the luminosity and then I'm obviously going to change that brightness as well like that. And I'm probably going to turn off that object shadow. I don't really need that to be on. There we go. And we might even want to consider changing some of the contrast. There we go. Let's bring the brightness down just a little bit more. There we go. And then, I don't know, I might even want to consider dropping the opacity. So there's the grate, technically. And the reason why I'm doing all that is because this, this section inside of here is actually black. It's not see-through. So that's kind of problematic. So we have to drop the opacity a little bit. Otherwise, that would look kind of weird. So we'll, we'll start with that. Oh, there are brick. Yeah, I mean, it depends. Like uh, the, the wall is not going to be as sturdy as the iron grate will. So I'm, my theory is just that the grate is just completely uh, just torn out of the wall. Uh, maybe one of the grate bars should be bent. Uh, and we could do that here. We could just take some piping and then bend one a little bit and then show that one of the uh, bars is bent. I'm not going to do that here. That just doesn't seem necessary. I mean, we could. Let's uh, Maybe we could try that out. Uh, let me check the, the broken prison ones you're saying. Let me see if they're any better. So the way to go about doing that is just to go straight into styles and packs and go right over to that. Where are you, prison? There you are. Okay, let's expand this. Is there any broken stuff in here? No, I'm not really seeing it. Oh, this one right here. Yeah, no, I kind of want to show like top down view if you were looking at it face view. So that's what I'm going with there. Um, I'm not so sure what else to to really do. This one is what I want to work with. Uh, let's go with, yeah, I'm not going to even worry about um, showing that bent bar. Maybe another time. Let's instead just uh, maybe, let's see here. I would assume a chain would work better, but rope is what we're going to end up using. It's okay if you want to use chain. I'm not going to use it. Chain's a little bit harder to work with, in my opinion. Just just me. Um, so I'll go with rope instead. Maybe it's just a really, really hard, thick, sturdy rope. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Good call. Yeah, with the pipe. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm not going to do that, though. I, for instead, what I'm going to do is just uh, just put a rope and put a knot on there um, and just show that. But maybe in the future I could do that. I just, I don't know. Maybe I'm just a lazy butt. You know what? Scratch that. I am a lazy butt. That, that's just it. I'm just a lazy butt. That's it. Okay, fine. You convinced me. I'll do it. All right? Gosh, all the pressure. All right, so... Uh, I don't think pipe is the right thing. Instead, you're going to want to go with plumbing. This is kind of one that most people don't know about, but there is this nice brass plumbing. These are much smaller, and they work a little bit better. Uh, these bent bars right here, not these bent ones, but this one might work. We can make it have it look like it's just bent like that, and then obviously we're going to want to drop the saturation like that and drop the brightness. There you go. And then there's kind of a bent pipe. The only problem is, is that you still have this right here already showing. So we'd have to construct the whole thing, but let's just not worry about that. Uh, one thing we could do maybe is putting a put a clipping mask over it or darken it with uh, a path tool. Let's just try that real quick, just for fun. So let's just say that this center bar was the one that was tied off. We'll go in, oh yeah, please, no advertising here. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and just go with the path tool and see if maybe we can kind of fix this little problem right here. Uh, let me just apply a stroke right here like this. We're gonna cover up that and then maybe switch it over to black. Oopsie, not that, what am I doing? You naughty thing, what's going on here? What is this nonsense? There we go. And we could probably just drop the opacity down and maybe kind of just hide that. Or we could use a, a blend mode maybe to remove it. Let's just see if maybe we can find a good option here to do that. Just go through. We might be able to do it. I don't know. Otherwise, flattening might be the end goal here. So you could just take the whole thing and just go flatten to BG layer. And then you, and then you can go in and kind of paint over that with uh, this texture. Let me see if they still have it. Perfect. We'll go with right here and we'll go over it like this and just kind of flatten it. 
There we go. So that bar is kind of gone now. I'll even just go in and just kind of fill in right here as well. So that, that way it looks a little better. So now you have that broken bar there. And then we can also add in a rope. I'm not going to use chain. Again, chain is kind of a pain in the rear. Unfortunately, there's no curved chain, like where the chain is slightly curved. And that's kind of important because what happens if you want to show no slack on your line? And by line, I mean rope, chain. Uh, you can't show that slack, unfortunately. Slack just means not taut. The rope's not taut. So this would be an example of the rope being taut. This would be an example of the rope not being taut. It's got some slack to it, okay? So I honestly, there are going to be moments where you want to show some slack or tautness in your ropes or your, your uh, chain. Chain does not have that little bit of curve in it, so I'm not going to use that. So instead, I'm going to use a rope, and I'm going to probably use one of these knots. And just we're going to be knotty right now and just kind of put a knot right here like that. And obviously, I'm going to want to change that blend mode, and I'm probably going to want to change the darkness or brightness, bring that down like that. So there you go. And then next we're gonna obviously gonna wanna put some rope in. Let's go back up. Those were knots. Why, why are these not with these? Is that, do I understand this wrong? What the fudge muckins? What's going on here? Okay, so we'll take a nice piece of rope here and then we'll have it be like this. Let me just take a, make sure I have the angle right. Because this might not be right. The problem might be that it pushed out this way. And I kind of want to make sure that it's below, below these stamps. Let me just go down. There we go. So it's below. Well, actually, it can be above. That makes sense. But I'll have to turn off. Uh, I'll have to change that opacity. So let's do this. Part of the rope will be on the ground, on like floating on the water, and then another part of it will be below the water. And so the way that we're gonna do that is just go like this, switch this over to luminosity real quick, like this. And then we're also gonna to want to change the transform, so bring the height down so that it's connecting from this rope to the knot. That's the next step, Let's just keep going. Make sure it connects to the knot. There we go, like this. I think that did it, and we obviously want to drop that brightness down. A lot of HSBC here. A lot of HSBC. That's kind of what you're going to expect uh, when you're doing broken stuff. Just to kind of give you a heads up, breaking stuff does require a little bit of HSBC work. So we have part of the rope underwater, part of it above it. Looks kind of odd to me, I know. Uh, I think it's just because of these lily pads. So what we could do is see if maybe I can find those lily pads and maybe move them they might have been flattened unfortunately i don't know roofs garden room prison main office foyer oh wait no this is something called outside right here ah there we go now can i select any of these perfect excellent let's just move these to the side there we go now it doesn't look so weird there we go now we have some rope there sticking out and it's been pulled out like that, and the great spin there. Let's go ahead and save at 32 changes. Looks good to me. Whoa, okay, yeah. Please, no showing any advertising. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Is there any questions so far about this one? I like the bent bar idea, by the way. Thank you to the user who suggested that. Great idea. Um, probably could do a little bit more there, but I think this will do just fine. So we've kind of created a prison break. Right here, this has all been pushed out. The grates and the rope's been pulled. Uh, yeah, this looks okay to me. I think this looks all right. I mean, the only other thing you could possibly do is just paint in some shadows. And I think that's it. So I think that's done. Where are we at for time? 11.47. You know what? This is a good time to call it good or to just quickly go over to some quick uh, Q&A. If people have any questions, now's the time to do it and we'll go over that because we've been going for two hours and I need to have take a little bit of a lunch and I'm sure some of you might need to take a lunch too. So please, if you have any questions, ask that right now and we'll go over those and then we will wrap up this stream. So while people are putting together some questions, putting together some questions, if there are any, let's quickly just discuss what the last stream of the month, which is going to be on Wednesday the 30th, and that's how to create a throne room, 10 a.m. PST. Don't worry, we always announce in advance when we're going to have a stream here on Twitch. 
go check out Throne Room. And that's going to be on Wednesday. I'm excited to do that with you all. That's going to be fun. And we also have some fun stuff coming up next month. Uh, Twitch works a little bit differently than YouTube. There's achievements that you have to get to unlock certain features. So we'll be changing up the schedule. We're doing some, uh, doing some streams on different days, maybe some on Tuesday, maybe on Thursday, Friday. Uh, I don't know if I'll do weekend. Maybe other team members would be willing to do streams on the weekend. So, so some of, I know some people aren't always able to make it to streams on this particular day. So by changing up that schedule a little bit, hopefully we can bring in some new crowds, not trying to push any of you away, but we want to add in some new crowds and make it accessible to other people as well by changing up the schedule. So look for that. And then also some really fun stuff that we want to add is we're going to do what's called map makeovers. Go ahead and check uh, the Discord uh, server. There's a map makeover channel. If you're not sure what a map makeover is, it's not really complicated. A map makeover is just where you go ahead and submit a map to us in that map making channel. And then what we'll do is we'll go over that map, decide if we want to do a makeover, and then we will. Now, a makeover is just when we take a map and we're going to on stream, whether it's live or a time lapse and we're going to add more details add more shadowing add more texturing add that kind of stuff so it's a way of making boosting up the map now there is a caveat any map that has a map makeover cannot be used for uh commercial use so if your map does get made over i'm sorry since it was made by someone else with extra stuff in there even though you made the original map it cannot be used for commercial use so that's the only kind of caveat but other than that, yeah, we're going to be doing map makeovers myself and other team members. So that might be Philip or Cheryl. And for other users out there who aren't on the team, you can totally do your own map makeovers. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to try to, uh, you know, try to, be, uh, I don't know, try to be on the team or try to, uh, find a way to do it if you if you have your own profile and you want to connect with other users you can totally do your own map makeovers it's not a problem it's easy to do um, just make sure that of course that you have permission from the original artist to do it especially if you're going to stream it or you want to share it with people obviously you know, i don't recommend uh selling any map makeovers that you do of other people's work unless you have explicit permission from the original artist so that's super important it's always important to be respectful of the original artists no matter what you're doing whether you're breaking or trying to showcase it on the stream whatever always give uh the proper recognition to the artist that is an absolute must okay all right, it doesn't look like there's any questions right now. It seems like we did a good job. I hope that I kind of showed you the basics on how to break buildings. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention is that if you've made a building with a composite stamp, uh, breaking that building will be a little bit harder because it's a composite stamp, right? So just know that if you want to break one with a composite stamp, you're probably going to have to flatten that composite to whatever the layer it's on and then you're going to have to end up probably adding in broken stamps and texturing over certain parts of the wall okay so that's the one thing i forgot to mention and because i know that composite stamps are the quickest way to make a building but it's not the easiest way to break a building because when you've put together a building with a bunch of walls you can delete those walls and put in broken walls and stuff there so again uh composite composite uh buildings you're going to want to probably flatten well that's it don't forget if you have any other questions feel free to ask cheryl go join our discord we are extremely helpful we love helping so please go ahead and join discord and anyone who is available will absolutely help you okay thank you everyone i've had a great stream i've had some great laughs you've all been so great and you've been so kind and polite. So I really appreciate you all so much. Keep kicking butt because you guys rock. All right. Keep on map making. All right. I'll talk to you guys later.